As with all scenes from a play, at one scene one of Hamlet is a moment of exposition. That is, a section of a text, be it a film, a novel, or a drama, in which we, the audience, have new information exposed to us. It's an opportunity for us to learn things about characters, places, and events. Most critics would agree that the most satisfactory method for exposition to take place is through action. And, luckily for us, Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 1, is bursting at the seams with it. There are three broad categories of exposition that can be identified in most texts. We can gain a better understanding of characters, learn how the setting and the atmosphere are affecting those characters' lives, and gain some more insight into events that have or currently are taking place. The opening scene of Hamlet is no different, so let's work our way through those three aspects of the scene to help us to gain a comprehensive knowledge of all that it has to offer. The play takes place in a castle called Elsinore in Denmark. It seems a strange choice for an English playwright to choose a distant country to set his play in. Elsinore is and was a real place that has an actual castle, but it's called Kronberg and it's based in Helsingar in Denmark. Elsinore is just the anglicised version of that name. You can still go and visit it to this day. Although the play is firmly set in the medieval era, the play is thought to have been written sometime between 1599 and 1602, with 1601 often cited as the most likely year it was penned. This time of writing is significant because a couple of years later, England would see a change in monarch transitioning from the Shakespeare supporting Elizabeth to the unknown James VI. More important was the fact that James VI was married to Queen Anne of, you guessed it, Denmark. All of the play, bar one scene, takes place inside the castle, but it would have been just as easy for Shakespeare to present the castle as a bright and sunny space than that which he actually does highlighting the importance of the atmosphere of the setting also. The opening scene takes place late at night and is naturally eerie. The setting is uncomfortable, being very cold. This is best summed up through the opening lines. Bernardo, the guard who is coming to relieve the watch, can't see who is approaching him. Neither can the guard who has been on watch, Francisco. Both men ask for verbal clarification, with Bernardo saying, Who's there? in a jumpy manner, and Francisco replying, Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. No, you answer me. Make yourself seen. He's suspicious and on edge also, and the darkness causes that. Francisco, when being relieved, states that, Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. Answer me! Stand and unfold yourself! Long live the king. Bernardo? He. You come most carefully upon your hour. It is now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. For this relief, much thanks. It is bitter cold. I am sick at heart. When we join the story, the setting is one of political turmoil. We know from the appearance of the king that's dead that a shift in power has just occurred. The political hierarchy of the castle and the empire has just experienced an upheaval. The old king is dead and there's a new king in town. Any shift in power or a power vacuum creates a great canvas for drama to be created upon. One of the most successful TV shows of recent times uses this concept as a vehicle for drama also. Succession states it explicitly in the title. 
all of the drama stems from the power struggle that takes place as a result of a media mogul's inability to control his empire and the infighting that occurs between his children to see who will succeed him. Add a supernatural element to this setting, a ghost appearing causing further worry, uncertainty and concern, and we have ourselves a tinderbox that is waiting for a spark to set it alight. But if you're expecting a quick spark, don't hold your breath. The tension and conflict created by the setting and atmosphere in Act 1 Scene 1 will be prolonged throughout the play. The setting is also one of broader conflict and threat. It's very important when writing dramatic narratives that you position readers in the action from the start. That's what's gripping and exciting. Imagine how different this play would be if we joined Horatio in his chambers as he got himself dressed, combed his hair, talked to the cook and decided what he'd eat before going up to the battlements. You get the picture. Instead, we are dropped into a setting and an atmosphere in which the immediate surrounds and the broader setting are action-packed and the events are contemporaneous to the characters. Denmark is a place under threat. It's on the cusp of war with the neighbouring state, Norway. Its rogue leader, young Fortinbras, is gathering an army and his attack is expected imminently. As a result, all of Denmark's population, its workforce, its army and its navy is preparing for this attack. There is nothing like the threat of war to generate drama in a text. Think about some of the great war movies for context. Saving Private Ryan. Inside of a few minutes of the film's opening, we're inside a landing vehicle heading for the beaches of Normandy. Or perhaps the 300. The play opens with the arrival of messengers from Xerxes' Persian army, informing King Leonidas of the impending arrival of a vast army and demanding his capitulation. Or maybe The Amazing Enemy at the Gates, the story about the Russian sniper Vasily Zaitsev arriving as a peasant to the apocalyptic surroundings of a besieged Stalingrad, unprepared, but dropped into the midst of a raging battle. You see what I mean? The broader conflict that Denmark finds itself in paints a wash of conflict and concern and lends the same tension and suspense to the events taking place inside of the castle. Well, that's it for today. Thanks a million for tuning in and we hope you've learned something new from Hedge Guru. If you haven't done so already, please check out the other videos in the Hamlet series. The links to those should appear on the screen shortly. You can also keep up to date with all of our news and what's upcoming on our social platforms, X, Instagram and TikTok. The links to those will be in the video descriptions. This episode will also be released as a podcast and the link to Spotify will also be in the video description. And finally, if you can see it in your heart, please click on the buttons down below to subscribe and to be notified of all future videos. It really helps out the channel. Or indeed, if you have any questions, just drop a comment down below and we'll try our best to get back to you. Until the next time, look after yourselves.